Oh yeah, I really enjoy sauna and steam rooms as a way of relaxing, recovering, and studying. I'll explain it later. If this were a video to show you or to let you know the many benefits of the sauna or the steam rooms, we would be here for an entire day because you have benefits for everything. Not only blood pressure, but also prostate. Dude, it really does increase prostate. That's good, right? Just kidding. But truth be told, it's one of the most utilized therapies in terms of relaxation, recovery, beauty, and health. Oh, and optimizing your performance. So let's burn. Let's start with a sauna. On a recent chat I had in my podcast, in my Portuguese podcast with Dr. Paulo Muzi, one of the leading experts in the science behind bodybuilding, he advised me not to do sauna right after a hypertrophy workout. However, even though it might not be the best therapy for hypertrophy reasons in terms of endurance, it can really increase your performance. One of the most shocking studies done on the subject demonstrated that if you do two 30 minute sessions right after the endurance workouts, twice a week for three weeks, you're running till exhaustion capacity increments by 32%. This is fing crazy. So, in my little will head, this, the explanation for, th for this must be since after an endurance workout, you're still going to keep your heart rate up by going to the sauna and minimizing the effects of impact on the training because you're sitting down, you're relaxing, it's like you're increasing the volume of workout done without having the usual side effects of endurance athletes, like uh, bad joints. Thus, it increased the plasma volume by three to 5% and the red blood cell count. Go figure. It also seems to help to avoid muscle atrophy as well as decreasing the amount of DOMS that you feel. Delayed onset muscle soreness. So, sore muscles. One last one. It seems to help increase the insulin sensitivity. How? By increasing the receptors of the glucose in the muscle cells. Now for the mental benefits. I always heard and read that the sauna will help you with concentration and memory. And I was like, okay, makes sense, but I didn't really know how. But let me share my experience with you. I always enjoyed the sauna, but I always thought it was kind of boring because you kind of look at the ceiling, look at all that wood. Sometimes you see stuff in bodies that you don't want to see because people are too liberal in the sauna. However, recently I started learning Chinese, Mandarin. I started studying it. And uh, one time I brought the books with me to the sauna, you know, just see how it goes to fill that time. And I got through the books, I read a little bit aloud, I did one or two exercises, and then I got out of the sauna and I really had memorized everything. So it was kind of magical. And once I shared that information with Dr. Paul Muzi, he told me that it's because of two things. And I was like, oh, there's really science behind this? Okay. So the first thing is, it's really small doses of information in a short period of time. A lot of people work better during stress times because they really have to focus. And you really wanna get away from how boring it is to be in the sauna. So you really focus for those small segments. The second one is the discomfort. You always, it's always a, a connecting piece to have discomfort or to have a strong feeling about something while you're learning. Everybody remembers what they were reading when they had a stomach ache. You always hear stuff like, I was reading about parrots in India when I had that stomach cramp. So the pain or the discomfort will help you memorize exactly what you were doing when you felt that. So this discomfort, the small discomfort that you get in the sauna will help you memorize, will aggregate the new knowledge with the old knowledge and makes for better knowledge. Anyways, it does make sense. And now for the steam room. The steam room doesn't seem to have as big a benefit in terms of muscles, especially because the temperature is about half. 
And what I mean by half is it really seems and feels like it's as hot or even hotter than the sauna because of the steam, but it's not really the same thing. It's not dry. But since it's moist, it does have a lot of benefits like cardiovascular health, and it really helps with breathing, sinus and bronchitis. I hope I'm saying it correctly. <laughs> I have a hard time breathing through my nose, so it really does wonders for me. Oh, and allergies. It improves blood circulation, especially in extremities, which in case might help lower blood pressure, which in case might help have a better heart. And lastly, of the benefits that I find most amazing is the skin. It really, it's really good for the skin in order to reduce the oily skin and reduce the oil and the greasy scalp. So some people, usually women, usually put their masks, their hair masks on and then go to the uh, steam room and they claim to have a better hair or a better feeling in their hair, if, if that's a real thing, just when they get out. Now, precautions, both for sauna and steam room. Let's start with the first one. If you have low blood pressure, no go. Any of these therapies because the heat will drive your blood pressure even lower. Another one, it's not good for people with acute claustrophobia. Like we discussed earlier, don't do it after a hypertrophy workout. Do it after an endurance workout. Don't do it for more than 20 minutes. And if you're a starter, start with five minutes, then progress to 10, then maybe 15, and then 20. If you have to stop every once in a while to get a cold shower and come back, do so. No, no, no alcohol. Not the day before, not that day. It's not a cure for hangovers. The idea that it gets rid of toxins, it's a myth. It only contributes to more dehydration and arrhythmia. Drink a lot of water. It's always difficult to recommend, but two to four glasses of water after each session would be good. Don't do it when you have a fever. If you have a fever, it's gonna be worse. If you're obstructed somehow, either lungs or congestion, it's something else. So a, a, a cold with no fever would be good to, to use a steam room, but no fever, no fever. Lastly, when you finish, go have a cold shower. Man up. Yes, it'll help your blood circulation through that temporary vasoconstriction. Then, then it's just like, it's, it's like a release afterwards. Like. It also helps with muscle recovery and with inflammation symptoms. And some people even say it helps with the inflammation symptoms of rheumatoid arthritis. Yes, I got it right. Ru rheumatoid arthritis. Yeah, good. R rheumatoid arthri arthritis. It's really difficult for a Portuguese guy. So this is what I got for you. Like, subscribe it. What? Oh, wh what? Does it help weight loss? No, it helps liquid loss, fluid loss that you get right after it. So if you drink those two to four glasses, the small percentage of weight that you lost due to fluid getting rid of your body, you're gonna get it back right away. Only caloric deficit helps with weight loss. Sorry, there's no button to push. Like, subscribe, follow on Instagram, and be safe. Willow safe.